Hi everyone, in this video we're going to introduce the notion of integration. So here is the idea. So we can start with a question. The question is what is a function whose derivative is 2x. So what is a function whose derivative is 2x? So one possible example would be f of x, and I'll use a capital letter for f, equals x squared. Because if you take the derivative of x squared, you get 2x via the power rule. You might say, well, what about big F of x equals x squared plus 1? That is also a function whose derivative is 2x. Likewise, we can look at big F of x equals x squared plus 3. In fact, we can take any number, right? We can look at big F of x equals x squared plus c, where c here is a constant. So there are infinitely many functions, right? There are infinitely many such functions whose derivative is 2x. So there's, there's infinitely many functions where you can take the derivative and you get 2x. So each of these functions, so each big F of x, each one of these is called, it has a name, has a special name, is called an antiderivative of big F. So it's called an antiderivative. It's a very delicate thing, mathematics, of big F. So 2x has infinitely many antiderivatives. Let us formally define uh, this idea of antiderivative in a formal, precise, and rigorous way. So definition. And by the way, this is the beginning of what people usually call integral calculus. Uh, back in the day, uh, people would go to school, they would take two courses. They would take differential calculus, that was, that was like calculus one, and they would take integral calculus, that was uh, like, like calculus two. So we say, we say big F, we say big F, is an antiderivative, so antiderivative, so big F is an antiderivative of little f, if, well, let's just think about it, what does it mean? Well, if you take the derivative of big F, you should get little f, right? And that's precisely what we have in our example above, right? The derivative of all of these big Fs is equal to little, little f. This could be our little f here, right? Little f could be our, our 2x. So the derivative of big F in any case is equal to little f. So this should be equal to little f. And this must be true for all x in some interval i. So for all x in some interval i, so in some interval i. So we're going backwards. Instead of computing derivatives, we're computing antiderivatives. So instead of differentiating, we are anti-differentiating. Um, this particular case up here, let me circle it in green so you see it. This one is special. This one has a name. So in the case where we have big F of x equal to x squared plus c, in our example above, this one was special. This one is called the general, the general antiderivative of little f of x equals 2x. So, so basically, it's going to be the general antiderivative whenever you add the plus c, okay? So when you add the plus c, 
it's, it's called the general antiderivative because it encompasses all of the antiderivatives, right? There's, there's infinitely many functions here, right? It's an infinite uh, family of, of functions. The process of finding an antiderivative is called antidifferentiation or indefinite integration. So let me go ahead and write that down. We have time. So the process, the process of finding an antiderivative. So the process of finding an antiderivative. Anti derivative is called it's called anti-differentiation or indefinite integration so it's called anti differentiation differentiation let me underline this anti-differentiation or indefinite integration. You might be wondering, why is it indefinite? Well, definite is actually something else. Definite integration, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, definite integration is a little bit different. So, Basically, definite integration is going to be used in some cases to find the area under curves. Uh, C has a name as well. So our big C in all of this, so big C this is called the constant of integration. So constant, constant of integration. That's called the constant of integration. Let's talk about the notation. So what, what is the notation that we use when we uh, study uh, anti-differentiation? So notation. Notation. So the notation is key. The notation is key. So we write a symbol that looks like this. So this is a really interesting symbol. It's called the integration symbol. It kind of looks like someone took the letter S and then they stretched it, right? And the thing is, the word sum starts with the letter S. So um, it turns out definite integrals can be written as limits of sums. So in other words, a definite integral can be written as uh, an infinite sum, right? So it's like they took the letter S and they made it longer. <laughs> Maybe because of the word sum. I, I'm not positive, but I heard that once, so it might be true. So it's like an elongated S because definite integrals uh, can be written uh, can be written as infinite sums. Okay, so this is the integral symbol. We have a function here, f of x, and we have this symbol here, dx, and I'll explain what this means in a minute. And we'll say this is equal to big F of x, big F of x, plus capital C. Okay, so what does everything mean and what is going on? So this piece here, this is called the integrand. So integrand. So when someone says, oh yeah, my integrand is, you know, really scary, they're talking about what you actually have to integrate. This dx here, it tells us what the variable that we are integrating with respect to. So this this means, in this case, it means x is the variable. So it means, it means we are integrating, right? Because there could be more than one variable. We are integrating with, w means with, r means respect to, with respect to, wrt, with respect to x. In calculus 3, or the study of uh, the calculus of uh, multivariable functions, we have like integrals where we have like dx, dy, and even dz. Um, so we integrate multiple times with respect to different variables. So it's important to have this notation. Here, big F, this is an antiderivative. An antiderivative. Der derivative. I forgot how to spell. Antiderivative. And big C is our constant of integration. So constant of integration. So when we add the C to the big F, we, we get we get the general antiderivative, right? This whole thing here is the general antiderivative. Notice something. Um, if we differentiate both sides, so note, if we differentiate, so if we differentiate both sides,
what happens? Well, we compute ddx, ddx of the right-hand side is big F of x plus our constant c. So this is equal to, well, we would take the derivative of big F, and the derivative of c is 0 because uh, c is a constant. Well, we know that big F is an antiderivative uh, for little f, so this is just equal to little f, right? So it checks. You can always check your answer uh, by taking the derivative. So you can check your answers uh, this way. Um, that's it. I think I'll stop this video here. Um, in the next example, we'll talk about some, some basic, uh, next video, we'll talk about some basic integration rules. That's it.